the envy, my envy, based on Juste Lacour's La Invidia, an allegorical figure of an old crone filled with bile, was one of the first two sculptures that I actually scanned. I didn't know at that time what I was going to do with the data. I just knew I wanted to start with an objective vision of the work. We look at work in the past and have a reverence for it and think that everything was perfect. Far from it, and especially with sculpture. It was almost always done on commission. And when the sculptor felt the commission had been fulfilled, he presented it. And in the case of Envy or La Invidia, uh, you see the compromises the artist made. My goal was to take that objective data as a starting point to perfect the work, to make something that went far beyond the point that Juste de Lacour reached. My assistants and I pay attention to every detail, backs, bottoms, sides. We treat everything the same. We have created, I think, full 3D sculptures in the round. I want people to be able to walk around and experience as objects, not just as facades on a wall. And uh, it's really difficult to identify any one of the things that I did differently than Juste Lacour did. But I think that the sculpture ultimately has a buzz, a kind of vibration of perfection because of us sweating the details. I think I make a distinction in my work between copies and uh, what I do. I'm definitely not copying or representing historical works. I'm using an historical artist's endpoint as my starting point and trying to analyze what my historical forebears were trying to do and attempting in my way to do it better. When I decided to work with the Bocconi, I was making the decision to work with a modernist icon. It's actually on the current version of the Italian Euro. It's probably the most well-known of all modernist sculptures. Pocioni created all of his sculptural work in the last few months of his life in a feverish burst of creativity. He hired an old plaster worker and his son and in six months created a pile of rough plaster sculptures that went off to World War I and uh, sadly died. And his works that we know, and they're really only three were created in bronze posthumously 20 plus years after he died. Here Bocconi is trying to make a modern man, uh, trying to reveal the fourth dimension, a man moving through space and the forces that he unleashes. And uh, it was realized in the most ancient of materials, bronze, using kind of antique methods. And my task was to realize what Bocconi, I think, intended to, and never had time to, nor the expertise. He wasn't a sculptor, he was a painter, and he hired other people to make his sculptures, uh, to help him make them, and they were never fully realized. So we took every curve, every form, every surface of the Bocconi scan and modified it and made it more perfect. We were joking in the studio that our goal was to make the Ferrari of Bocconi's. And uh, that was a long process digitally. And ultimately it's going to be realized in either highly reflective materials or translucent materials to, in both cases, mirror the world around it or make it blend into the world around it to extend Bocconi's concept of a figure unified with the space around it.